Dear students, today we will discuss about the weave parity in fishes. When we talk about the viviparous and oviparous fish, viviparous refers the fishes which give birth to live young. The eggs develop while receiving nutrition from the parent. Such kind of fishes are called viviparous fish. And the oviparous fish, these are fish which give birth to live young which do not receive nourishment from the parent while in the womb. What is viviparity? Viviparity in fishes is an extremely complex phenomenon since it involves numerous modifications in the reproductive system of both males and females. The viviparous species of teleost, unlike other groups of vertebrates, do not present typical oviducts. The adaptations that involve the gestation only occur in the ovary and embryo. What is the sexual maturity? Fishes can become sexually mature at various ages depending on the species. Several factors influence sexual maturity including age, gender and size. Some bony fishes become sexually mature shortly after birth. Here I have mentioned one of the example, the western mosquito fish Gambusia affinis, it becomes sexually mature within a year. Most uh, bony fishes, they become sexually mature between 1 and 5 years. As I had already mentioned, it differs in different species. It takes 10 years or more for some bony fishes to become sexually mature. Most bony fishes are in excess of 8 cm before reproducing. The eels, which belong to family Anguillidae, it becomes sexually mature between 10 to 14 years of age. And the sturgeon belonging to family SC Pensridae may take up to 15 years to mature. In general, species of a small maximum size begin reproducing at an earlier age than those with large maximum size. Age and associated size are the major factors in the determination of adulthood. Fish that give birth to more or less completely formed young fry as distinguished from fish that spawn eggs. Uh, most silice, here I would like to mention, silice include the majority of stars, stingrays, eagle rays, and giant rays. The all kind of fishes are viviparous fish. Among bony fish, viviparity is a characteristic of uh, eel pouts. You can see the jorces, viviparous, bar, sebastes. When we discuss about the Bacal oil fish, that is the Comiphorus bacalensis, many fish of the family Cyprinodontidae, four eyed fish, and a blabs, Tetrophthalmus, and some fresh water fish of the family Hemiramphidae. Friends, how fertilization occurs in the viviparous fishes? I can mention here fertilization of all viviparous fish is internal. In no case it is external. In strictly, viviparous fish are the fish the embryo is attached to and nourished by the mother's body, that is the smooth hound. Uh, one more term I have mentioned here, it is the oviviparous fish, which comprise the majority of viviparous fish. The ova are in the mother's body, but are not connected to it. The ova of these fish develop by feeding on the yolk. The development period of the fry in the ovary or in modified oviducts ranges from 2 or 3 weeks in cyprinodonts to 7 months in SARS. It means it differs in the cyprinodonts and in the SARS. When we discuss about the SARS, SARS give birth to one or several large fry measuring up to 70-70 cm long. Most beneficiaries bear tens or hundreds of fries. Marman's sea bass gives birth to as many as 50,000 small larvae, measuring up to 8 mm long. Weeper fish of the family Pisilidae, such as guppies and short tails, they are raised in aquariums. Friends, modifications in the reproductive system of males are also decisive. Since the need to reach internal fertilization or internal gametic association, 
out of 25,000 species of tiered fish, approximately 500 fish species are viviparous. Means only 500 out of 25,000. Half of these species are predominantly freshwater species, belonging to three families inside the order Cyprinodontiformes, the Anaplepidae, Guridae, and Pisilidae, and one family inside the order Etherinformes, the Hemiramphidae. The Pisilids are the most numerous with approximately 200 species, followed by the Gudids with 36 species. The species that belong to these families present a great variability in their reproductive biology and in their life history patterns. Different pistillids exhibit from the primitive lecitotrophy to the specialized metatrophy, and some of them present superfractation. A large number of these species are bisexual, but some can be unisexual, like Pisilia formosa, that reproduces through gynogenesis, or like the species of the genus. Pisili opsis that reproduce through hybridogenesis. Most of the freshwater river fish species are now endangered. The 2003 IUCN Red List of Endangered Animals considers that 33% of the goodied species are endangered and even extinct. It's a very important point. The main causes responsible for this are of uh, anthropic origin and include the destruction of habitats, pollution, and introduction of exotic species. I thank you, thank you very much.